Okay, this is problem three. Uh, at first glance, it looks awfully similar to problem two. It's, in fact, a little more sinister. In this case, again, we have a cylinder. The area, again, is 345 square centimeters. But this time, we know the height, and we want to find the radius. So before, we knew the radius. We want to get the height. Now we know the height. We want to know the radius. It looks like the same kind of problem. But look at this. This is a little different. We're going to solve it the same way. But whereas before, think about this equation and how you would solve this yourself with a piece of paper. Solving this equation for h is fairly trivial um, algebraically. But think about solving it for r. Well, a little tricky because there's an r squared and an r in this equation. In fact, this equation is a quadratic in r. It's something r squared plus something times r minus a equals zero. That's a quadratic. It's a little harder to solve. Still, math that has no problem with it. I'm going to solve it exactly the same way, at least at the beginning. So, on the equation, click on the variable you want to solve, either that r or that one. Either one is fine. And again, go to symbolics, variable, solve. This will be a little scary when the result happens, though. Solve. Oh, there's our solution. Mmm. Well, what we actually have here, this is a MathCAD matrix. It's actually two results. It's this result here and this result here. Now I can evaluate this. I can click on this again, click anywhere and press equals and it evaluates. So there's, and I'll change this to centimeters, there's actually two answers to this problem. There's two radiuses that'll work, surprisingly. So think about what we're actually doing. We have a real cylinder. It really is six centimeters high, right? Not very high. And it has a real surface area. So there is some real radius that we need. And yet, the solution has two radiuses. There's two results, which seems counterintuitive. It seems like there should only be one right answer. And in a sense, there is. In an engineering sense, there is. Look at the result. There's this and this result. And they work out to be about five centimeters or about minus 11 centimeters. The answer we want is the five centimeter one. How do we know? How could the radius be negative? If you want to call up a metal supermarket, and try and order a piece of aluminum round bar six centimeters long and whose diameter is minus 22 centimeters. What would that mean when the radius is five and diameter is 10 centimeters? That's fair enough. This is a strange little thing. It's a little upsetting because it's surprising that this even works. But the math says there is two values of R that will result in this particular area at this particular height. But we don't care about this one. We're not mathematicians. We're engineering people. So here's what we're going to do. To finish this problem, we don't want to see all this mess. Instead, what we're going to do is highlight the expression for the, the one that we want, the, the positive solution. Hit Control-C to copy it. And now, delete this. We're done with it. And now, make our definition for R. R, colon, and then paste, Control-V. And that's our positive solution. And then equals to evaluate it. And then finally, put it in centimeters. And because it's our final solution, let's make it highlighted. And I like the nice bright yellow highlighting. OK, there's our solution. So this problem on the surface of it is very similar to the one that we just did. But because what we're solving for is a quadratic, it has a more complex solution. There's actually two right answers. A simple way to think about this problem is consider uh, if you have a square and you want the area of the square to be 4 square centimeters, how long should the sides be? And the obvious answer is, well, 2 centimeters. 2 centimeters times 2 centimeters is 4 square centimeters. And yet, there is another answer. The other answer is, what if the sides were negative 2 centimeters long? Because negative 2 centimeters times negative 2 centimeters is also equal to 4 centimeters squared. But you can't buy a square of material that's negative 2 centimeters in dimension. Okay, so there's a math answer, and then there's the engineering answer. We only want the one that makes sense, so that's what we do. So we extract out the one that makes sense, delete the nonsense and the extra stuff that's just kind of confusing, and uh, leave it at this. So you'll find if you evaluate this expression with this value for R and the 6 centimeters for H, you will in fact get 345 square centimeters for the area. And I hope that's clear.